Hello, and welcome to the Stat Nerd Draft Report. I am your host, Patrick Oxford, as always. And today with me, I have Advanced Stats 23, or Gimme Fucking Doncic, as some people may know him. So today we're going to give him some uh, Doncic for sure. We're going to talk about him and uh, the Big 12. So how is your day going today? It's good, except for the Mavs winning. Yeah, although I, I do have to say Nerland's getting a hot dog at halftime. <laughs> best story ever. Absolutely best story ever. But uh, all right, so let's go on to Luka Doncic. Six foot eight, 228 pounds. I do not have his wingspan in front of me. If you do, that would be awesome. But anyways, yeah, I don't uh, have it. that's all right. 18.7 years old. Um, he's considered by most of the top guard prospect in the draft. What are some things you like and dislike about his game? I think the first thing I like about his game is he's just a really smart player. He's really advanced for his age. He knows, like on the pick and roll, he knows how to coordinate through guys behind him. Like you see Chris Paul always with guys behind him. He knows how to keep them behind him and how to draw those fouls. He's still working on the drawing fouls part, but he knows how to stay in front of his man on offense, I guess. And mm-hmm. so that's the first thing that stands out. His handle is very advanced. I think I think that's one of the reasons why I'm so high on him is though he's not the most athletic guy, he, he should be able to get to the rim an okay amount, maybe not a lot because he's not that explosive, but just his handle will give him opportunities like on maybe two-on-two opportunities like on fast breaks and stuff like that. Yeah, I definitely agree. He uh, has a good enough handle to weave his way through the defense. Getting to where he wants on the court, even without that explosive speed you see from a lot of prospects, he's scoring uh, 1.057 points per possession as a pick-and-roll ball handler this season, which is 89th percentile. Obviously good or amazing, not not just good. <laughs> 87 possessions, uh, 29% of his offense. He, he really is just – a monster at creating in the pick and roll when he's running the pick and roll uh his pick and rolls including passes are 1.237 points per possession which is the 96th percentile and i didn't look to see where 177 possessions ranks but i would assume that's pretty high i mean there's just not there's a lot to like about his game and not a lot to not like unless you're really just convinced that the athletic translation is going to doom him in my opinion yeah, I totally agree. So, uh, catch and shoot, he's 1.2 per points per possession on guarded catch and shoots. I'm not sure how Synergy defines guarded, if it's within four feet or how they do it. What would you like to see as for a fit for him, for a team? Well, I mean, ideally, he'd, he'd be better off going to a team that has a rim protector or, like, a center who can – who can be kind of the defensive anchor, that would mm-hmm. be perfect. And where maybe they have a point guard that can play off the ball more, so he can be more of a primary or a co-primary initiator. Yeah. Those are kind of those kind of fits. But the top of the lottery, there aren't really any of the teams with. See, I was thinking on the Bulls, he could be a nice fit because they already have Levine there who could be kind of that secondary initiator maybe. Chris Dunn, if he pans out defensively, I don't think he's a primary or even a secondary ball handler at this point. But he can obviously guard probably whoever is the stronger of the backcourt, leaving the weaker for Doncic to cover. Or Levine, I guess, if they want to move Doncic up to cover the three. I don't know. I thought that was an interesting fit. I thought teams like the Hawks, the Mavericks, Kings probably – won't even be considering him. You don't think so? Uh, I mean, the Mavericks and Kings are pretty sold on uh, De'Aaron Fox and Dennis Smith. At this point, they're gonna, there's, there's enough bigs in there, and both teams, I think, need – maybe not the Kings as much, but the Mavs obviously need that center, just like you think would be great to pair next to Doncic. The Mavs still need that center. Obviously, Noel, as we saw today, is not the center of the future. <laughs> So, I mean, unless you think, like, Salah Mejri is is the answer going forward or Dwight Powell is going to be playing some small ball center minutes, I think they're looking at Aiton or Bamba 
somewhere. I mean, obviously, Bombas plays right down the street. For, I say right down the street because it's – but in Texas, it's not right down the street at all. <laughs> I just think there's other priorities they're going to be covering, whereas they already got their primary ball handler last year. Whereas the Bulls got a big that would be amazing next to Doncic and Markinen. Like, that would just be – those pick and rolls, wow. Yeah, I – I, I get where you're coming from. I think the map, though, would take another initiator if maybe they, if Dantish keeps playing like he's playing and yeah. he's, like, consensus number one, I still think they'd take him number one. I mean, like, if mm-hmm. if somehow Sexton would be number one, would be consensus number one, they somehow got lucky in the lottery, they're obviously not going to take him. But I think for Doncic, they're fine. They'd be okay taking a wing. But I got, agree. Yeah, he's got enough offensive versus tell you. I see where you're coming there because, yeah. Okay. But I agree that for them, big man is probably their number one priority at this point. Yeah, and there's so many bigs that Doncic would really have to set himself above the pack, I think, for them not to find one big that they could – you know, argue themselves over in terms of priority. I think the Grizzlies are an interesting fit, especially if, you know, we don't really know what they're going to do with the rest of this season. But that's somewhere I thought, you know, they're just probably going to be bottoming bottoming out this season. I would, as long as you have no pick obligations this year, bottom out as you can. The Clippers could be another team that, that totally bottoms out with all their injuries. Mm-hmm. They definitely could. Yeah. I agree with that. All right. Do you have anything else or comparisons you'd like to make for Doncic? I, I had trouble coming up with one. He's, he's such a unique player. Yeah. I mean, the only ones I could come up with are kind of on the lazy side, so I'd rather not say them. Fair but, enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I'm not going to force any comps out of you. That's You You, you want to be really confident about those before you start yeah. talking about there. I understand. Yeah. All right. Totally so agree. let's go on Move move to Texas. Uh, Muhammad Bamba, seven feet tall, seven foot nine wingspan with a nine foot six standing reach. It's practically touching the rim, just standing there. Only 216 pounds and 19 and a half years old, so he's not a super young freshman. His wingspan allows him to contest shots pretty much nobody else can from just a standing position. But like I said, his weight's really low. Do you think he's going to be able to add the weight necessarily? necessary to to excel at the next level um i think he can excel at the next level i'm not sure he has the kind of frame to add more than maybe like 15 20 pounds i think he's always going to be on the skinnier side Mm -hmm. of things yeah i think i agree with you what do you think are some elements to his game that needs to work on to uh maintain or rise on draft boards i think i've been a little disappointed with his offensive awareness he doesn't really he doesn't really know what to do off the ball and get himself into positions where point guards can find him for easy finishes. He seems to like po- try to post up a lot. And part of that's probably coaching, but, and he's also not the smoothest, like rim pick and roll rim diver that you think he would be. Yeah, I agree. There's not the fluidity to his game that you'd like to see, but Gobert didn't have that fluidity either at that age. So I think it's something that you can develop but it's not something everybody can develop. Like, So we'll see if he's one of those people. Going back to what you were talking about in the post, over a quarter of his offense is from the post, and he's only scoring .556 points per possession. So definitely, yeah, yeah, it's awful. And if over a quarter of his points are coming from – or over a quarter of his possessions are coming from there, he's really just not giving scouts a lot to see that can translate. Yeah. And then um, as far as using his – Length defending, he's not really effective defending the post and at his weight. There, that's definitely something I think other teams are going to be going at if he can't just yeah. you know, steal. So, uh, but he is blocking a lot of shots, unlike Jared Allen. He didn't really oh, block yeah. many shots last year, which was kind of disappointing. Yeah, I definitely think he'll be a rim protector, but as far as a one on one defender, I think there's going to be some, some improvements that need to be made mostly to his body probably lower lower body building that strength up so he can not just get bulldozed underneath the rim totally agree so we were talking about uh fish for Doncic. let's go fits for bomba i already said the mavericks earlier i think the hawks are another team that would definitely 
like to have him? The Bulls, maybe. Any others you thought of? Uh, I mean, it matters what happens to DeAndre, but if DeAndre some, did, did leave, or if they traded him, the Clippers would be a fit also. Yeah. Totally agree. Yeah, I think they're probably going to bottom. They're probably going to bottom out pretty quickly. I haven't seen, or maybe I have, and I just don't recall it. How long Blake Griffin's projected to be out? I think I don't think there is like an exact okay. timetable right that's, now. That's not a good sign, probably. No. Yeah. Uh, as far as teams that probably wouldn't be looking at them, the Nets, Kings are two teams. I think that probably. I think at least want to see what they have with the centers they have. And they're kind do of the, similar. Do the Nets have their own pick this year? Oh, you're right. They don't even have their own pick. I don't even know why I have them in there. I'm dumb. Ha! <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, Who so, has their pick this year? Uh, the Cavs do. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep, the Cavs do. And so, he would be a fit kind of with the Cavs. Oh, so I guess sure. Because they the have – only thing – Go ahead. The only thing is, though, that he's going to take some time to develop, so they might look for more of a someone that could come in and, and yeah. contribute a little more. Right well, if they keep the pick, that means they probably didn't make a power trade that people are uh, kind of projecting or rumors are having them looking to make. So if they don't make that power trade, maybe they are just using that pick as a, this is our future pick. Yeah. That makes so, sense. Maybe it's just like, all right, LeBron, you do what you want to do because free agency is after the draft. We're worried about the draft. Let's go on to Andrew Jones, unless you have something else to add about Bamba. Um, he has tried at least to shoot some threes so far, but it hasn't looked that good. And he's been, what, shooting 20% or something on threes? Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see if that part of his game can develop. I'm not optimistic, but if it does, then he definitely has just a whole another level to his game that yeah. I think some people are optimistic are there, and that's where they kind of see the maybe he should be the number one. I don't see number one in his ceiling. Me either. So Andrew Jones is six four and a quarter with a six six and a half wingspan, 185 pounds, 20 years old, plays mostly shooting guard. He's impressed me this season with his improvements, shooting from all over the court. Are those improvements you think that are due for a regression, or is it just legit improvement? Um, well, it's not like he shot like terribly. It's not like he shot like Darren Fox last year. He shot, what, 33% from three, and he shot 77% from free throw line. So mm-hmm. it's like his jumper is a question. It's not like a sure thing that's going to be bad. So I definitely think it's not out of the question that he's – he becomes an average NBA shooter or something along those lines. I agree, yeah. I think that uh, the free throw percentage is the thing that gives me the most confidence. That it's Maybe doesn't maintain quite this level of shooting, but above average isn't something I think that's too difficult to envision. Do you think he's a possible second-round pick? Um, well, for me, I like him even more than that. I would okay. – I – I kind of got a little bit of a draft crush on him from last year. I think he's he's more physical on defense than most guards that you see. And so I think he has a lot of defensive upside. And so for me, I, I think middle to late first round isn't out of the question. But who knows how NBA execs feel about him, I guess, right now. Yeah, and there's yeah, still yeah. a lot of time. I definitely see what you're saying, and uh, I think he's better running the pick and roll than you'd think just because uh, his assist numbers aren't terribly high, but he he does run the pick and roll with some competence. So I think even though he mostly plays, I think shooting guard is probably the the translatable position. He definitely could be a secondary ball handler. Yeah. Uh, Anything else to add about Andrew Andrew Jones? Not really. I just he's one of those guys that's gonna be really interesting and I, see if his jumper keeps shooting well, basically. Yeah, I agree. I, and it it looks like a pretty form. Like it, it's not like there's it's you look at it and you're like, How is that going in? So yeah. let's move on to another dude that I'm pretty confident is going to be a shooter. Trey Young out of Oklahoma, six two with a six four wingspan, hundred and seventy six pounds, nineteen point two years old. He's just 
amazing handling the ball, but he didn't have the best measurables or athleticism. What are some pros and cons to his game for people that aren't familiar with it? Well, you kind of said the cons. He's not – he's – like for an NBA prospect, he's not that physically put together. He's not the most athletic guy. So those are kind of the main cons, and it'll be – and also he's not, not always on the defensive end that aware or putting in a lot of effort from what I've seen. So those are kind of the worries on offense. He's – He's got unlimited range, as you basically said. And he's shown some passing shots, so I'm not sure his assist per game is really a representation of quite how good of a passer he is. So I, he's very interesting, for sure. I'm not, I'm not quite sure if some of the hype he's gotten as an NBA prospect, but he's really fun to watch. Okay, so you think his assist holes are inflated. See... When I was looking at the numbers, it looks like the uh, passes to cutters that he's making, running yeah. the pick and roll, and uh, I think also out of isolation, though I'm not going to commit to that out of the isolation. Those passes were going for like 1.7 points per possession. I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but that's what I remember. While oh, wow. the uh, passes to shooters were like 0. 0.7. Interesting. So, so it almost seems like to me the shooters are letting him down. But I don't know. I you know I looked at some of the film. I didn't watch every single possession, so. Yeah, I haven't watched every single possession either. It's just kind of a feel thing for me. Um, mm -hmm. He's definitely one of those main guys like Andrew Jones that you want to watch going forward, and he's just really fun to watch. He's one of the best just college basketball players right now to watch. Yeah, I think like as a floor for him, just with what he's shown. I'm not going to say absolute floor, but like kind of expected floor. I would say uh, he can be like an, a great sixth man that can just come get you instant offense. Yeah. And then a ceiling would obviously like, if we we're just going to go crazy ceiling, it would be, I don't think Steph Curry, because he's definitely not as athletic as Steph Curry. People say Steph Curry is unathletic, but he's definitely not unathletic. So, uh, I, Go Maybe ahead. like eighty for five percent of Steph Curry or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, those exactly. Something like that. He's got a little more street ball, I think, in his game than Steph Curry does. Yeah, his yeah, that's true. His handles are flashy and they're effective too. So yeah, yeah, exactly. He has purpose with his with his moves on the court. It's not like well, I'll, I'm not gonna say every single move because I have seen him dribble just twenty seconds off a shot clock. Just in <laughs> so I'm not gonna say all of them have purpose, but so uh, what kind of range do you see for him on the draft? Um, I think the ceiling range is probably like around around eight to ten, maybe. I don't think he's got top five potential. I guess. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's, yeah. That's along those lines. I think he'll probably be a late lottery prospect. I think his conference play is going to matter a lot because the concerns with Steph Curry were mostly, I think, the level of competition he was going up against just wasn't there. But if Trey Young is doing it against a Power 5 conference and keeping – I'm not going to say he's going to keep the 30 and 10 or whatever he – I haven't looked at his exact numbers, but I think he's close to 30 and 10 right now. He didn't have to average that in Big 12, but if he's at something like 25 and 8, I don't know. Top five might be in the running because teams don't want to miss on the next Steph Curry. Yeah, that is true. There aren't that many lead guard prospects in this class. Yeah, so if you kind of want one, it's Doncic, Sexton, and Young, I think would be my top yeah, three. Pretty... Yeah, same here. Okay. Anything else you want to add about Trey Young? Maybe possible fits for teams? Well, the interesting thing is lots of the – really bad teams like the Kings, the Mavericks, they though I guess the Bulls aren't really committed to Dunn, I'd say. So but I think the, he's movable to the two as well. Yeah, the Kings and Mavs, those are bad fits, I'd say. And I think the Bulls would be an interesting fit, though I'm not sure about the defensive personnel they'd have. Yeah, I had uh Kings Mavs on my bad fits as well, Bulls and Grizzlies. We're on my list of possible good fits. I'm not sure. Well, actually, yeah, I think that'd probably be right around the Grizzlies range, no matter what they do, honestly, at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, anything else you want to add about Young? No. All right. Uh, we'll go to 
TCU. I know you said you didn't know much about Bain, so I looked into Bain quite a bit myself, though. He's 6'5", 6'4", wingspan, 219 pounds, so he's already got a really mature frame at only 19.4 years old. I think that he's really making an argument that he's got the maybe not the physical tools, but the mental tools to at least be an above average defender in the NBA. And his shooting is just insane right now. He's something like 80% true shooting. So yeah, he's just killing it. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Guarding pick and roll defense. He's only allowing 0.455 points per possession. His spot up numbers are bad right now at 1.294, but I mean, those are super volatile and they were much better last season. Like he was, I think, in the 70s for percentile for spot up last year. So it's not something that really worries me on the short, small sample. His closeout could use work, is what I noticed on film mostly watching those spot up attempts. He doesn't really chop his feet very well, but he does do a good job staying with the play pretty much. And that's why I think that he's good defending the pick and roll because he doesn't give up and die on screens. Offensively, to get those numbers mostly, he's been eating in transition and spot up jumpers. He's just been knocked down on his shooting. That's obviously something that's the most prone to regression out of anything. So he was a good enough shooter last year, though, that I don't think it's something where he's going to drop to below average. Moving on to Iowa State, Donovan Jackson, 6'2", 173 pounds, 21.8 years old. Uh, He's seen a huge increase in his three-point attempts this season, and he's seen a decline in his efficiency to go along with that. But it's not such a steep decline that it isn't worth the added volume, in my opinion. Uh, He isn't skilled from inside the arc. Is that something that's going to stop his name from being called in the second round, do you think? Uh, I I think it's unlikely he's going to be drafted. As you said, inside the three-point line, he's he's just not that gifted as a – Pull up jump shooter. I don't think he's that great, though he sometimes has a lot of confidence in his pull up jumper from what I've seen off like pick and roll at mm-hmm. times. I haven't watched Iowa State this year, but I watched some of them last year. And so that's what I remember from him. And okay. he, he's, he's not that great of a finisher either. Yeah. So I'm kind of skeptical that he'll be drafted. Yeah, I think he would be a matter of his three-point attempts staying high while the the efficiency goes up and some team just talks himself into it late second. They say, hey, you know, let's see if we got a shooter on our hands. Yeah, that makes sense. So uh, let's go on to West Virginia. Javon Carter, he's 6'2", 200 pounds, 22.2, so he doesn't have that youth factor on his side. He's having another solid year from deep after uh, kicking off his junior year. Does it seem like something that's going to translate to the longer line for you? I hope so. Um, he was one of my also draft crushes last year, like Andrew Jones. He's mm-hmm. he's he's not really – he's not a point guard. He's an off-ball type offensive player. But I think he shows potential as a catch-and-shoot guy. Um, do you have his numbers exactly? What he's shooting off the catch? Uh, I can look him up real quick while you talk for sure. All right. Um, so I think – Obviously, the most intriguing part about him is he's got a lot of defense potential. He gets up in your face. He's really aggressive, sometimes to a fault, but I'd say overall it's a big plus for him. He gets a bunch of steals. And I guess a worry thing is kind of like the Syracuse thing. West Virginia plays in the kind of defensive system no NBA team even close to emulates. And so Mm -hmm. he's going to have to adjust to playing man defense and not being super aggressive in the full court. But I like him. Yeah, I thought a possible comp for him is uh, Patrick Beverly. I think that, like you said, he's a shooting guard, but he's obviously got that point guard body. So uh, he probably has enough positional defensive versatility to guard most twos, even at his height, I think, just because of that that grit and try hard that he has. Uh, let's see, catch and shoot. I'm scrolling down to it right now. So, catch and shoot this season, guarded 0. 0.909, but unguarded 1.385. That unguarded is the 71st percentile. All right. So, so go ahead. He has potential as a shooter. Like, he's one of those guys that is probably going to be around averages as a shooter, I'd say. Mm-hmm. But... 
uh, uh, kind of like your comp, his real selling point is his defensive potential more than his offense potential. Yeah, it's going to be a unique fit. So I think that, like, a unique fit to find, you know, the successful match for him in terms of a backcourt partner. So it could be that he goes undrafted just because the team that could fit his skills doesn't have a pick in that range. And But I expect him to, if he goes undrafted, to be signed that night. Yeah, I think he'll probably be drafted in the second round. Okay. I'm pretty confident in that. Okay, I like that because, yeah, I think his his defense is definitely something that I see translating no problem. Like, yeah. very little issue with that. So, let's move on to Kansas. I'm going to try not to uh, destroy <laughs> his name. Sviatoslav Mikhailuk. I don't that, was, know. that was better than I could do, so. All right, all right that's all I can ask. <laughs> uh, he's six, seven and a half. And so his wingspan the last time he was measured was six foot five, but that was shorter than uh, the other times he was measured. So I'm assuming that it's somewhere in between six five and six six. Still a negative wingspan, so not great. Two hundred and twenty pounds, and despite being a senior, he's only twenty and a half years old. Started That's really amazing, over, right? What do you, What do you think some of his strengths and weaknesses are? Um, well, his number one strength is he's a good shooter. He's he stays on balance. Like even when his shooting percentages weren't that high as a freshman and I think sophomore, he also struggled a bit. You could tell the uh, shooting per- the shooting potential just by the smoothness of the stroke. Mm-hmm. So I'd say that's his most translatable NBA skill. He's he's not a good athlete, I wouldn't say, but he he's got some quirks kind of to his ball handling that allows allows him to at times get to the rim but he really shies away from contact and he never gets Mm -hmm. to the line both offensively and defensively despite the lack of athleticism he's got a high enough iq at least at the college level to be where he needs to be you know yeah so uh i I thought it was kind of uh interesting because he definitely could have gone last year and i think have been drafted in the second round but he he definitely made the right choice now in my opinion yeah he's putting up big numbers this year yeah, he sh- I didn't think he could be that volume shooter, honestly, and he that won't be his role in the next level, that volume score, but the fact that he can get hot like that, I think is some an upside the NBA team didn't have for him before, but now it's something you can kind of bake into there. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to add about V? Do you think he's going to be a second-round pick, or...? Yeah, I'd say second-round pick. I don't really think he's going to be... I guess you could see him going like near the very end of the first round, but I'd say second round's far more likely. Yeah, uh, those late first round picks were just getting so easy to get compared to those early first. There could be some team just says, hey, you know what? He's young enough. We want him. Let's move up and get a late first. Yeah. Baylor, uh, Manu Lecomte. I, again, no confidence in that pronunciation, but we'll go on. 5'11", with only a six one and a half wingspan, 168 pounds, 22.3 years old. I think the, the really the selling point on him would be not at draft, but you pick him up for a summer league and maybe he turns into a second string, maybe th- probably third string point guard. He's been absolutely dreadful inside the arc, but he still has amazing efficiency this season. Where do you see him going in the draft? Well, I agree. I don't see really – it's almost un- – I'd say it's really, really unlikely he gets drafted. Mm-hmm. He'll probably be maybe not one of the first, but one of those priority um, summer league-type signings mm-hmm. to where teams are going to go after him. He's going to have more than one summer league option. Maybe he plays in both of them. And he's going to have to put up big numbers there because his height is a big deterrent, and it's not like he's super long to make up for it. And yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they do with the summer leagues this year with Orlando being shut down. I want to see if Utah maybe moves theirs up a couple days. It'd be interesting because then you yeah. could have teams doing the full thing of both of them. Yeah, that would be ideal. Uh, anything else you'd like to add about LeCompte? I, I, I think that he, the chances he has weight and can really ever do anything in the paint, it's very low. He probably goes to Europe. Yeah, I'd say most likely Europe. 
Mm-hmm. I guess maybe he wants to stay. If he wanted to stick around a couple of years in the D League, maybe get a 10 day eventually or something. But long term, he's he's a Europe option. Agreed. Last up out of Texas Tech, we got Keenan Evans, 6'3, 185 pounds, 21.3 years old. He's playing well, but his three point shot's not hitting. If he doesn't get that up around at least average, but continues to excel in these other areas like he is, how much do you think his shooting in prior seasons should be considered? Well, always with shooting, you're looking at sample. In college basketball, obviously, you're only, you're only playing in 35 to 40 games max. Mm-hmm. So we should, we should use all data available to us. And so definitely it should be vastly considered over, like, what is it, 30, 40, three-point attempts he's taken so far? Mm-hmm. Something like that. And what do you see his range as? Um, second round to undrafted. I don't think he's got really first round upside. Do you think that the drop in his three point percentage could be due to a change in role that NBA teams should be wary about? Yeah, it's a small degree. He's he's playing at a higher usage, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but and, and it's it's always an important sign to look at guys in smaller roles to bigger roles to see how they're going to adjust in the NBA. And if you can't handle a big role in college, and I'm not saying he can't handle it, but maybe his shooting drops off some, but then it should be a bit of a worry sign for his offensive potential at the next level. Yeah, that's something I look at a lot when I'm scouting the usage to three-point purport, or I guess ratio would be the – yeah, ratio – Usage to three point ratio. If if the guys can't get the uh, shots they want with the ball consistently in their hands, then I'll have a lot less confidence they're going to be anything other than a catch and shoot. E- even as much as you know, let me take a step, side step. So we'll see. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to add on the Big Twelve? Not really. Anything you want to add? No, I think we covered all the interesting prospects. But if you're listening and we miss somebody. Be sure to uh, at us. I'm at, at Hoops Metrox, and I have at Advanced Stats 23 with me. Give me fucking Doncic. <laughs> it was great having you on, man. I hope to have you Thanks. on again. Yep. And um, everyone, subscribe, follow, do all that. Thank you.